for um, the American public to watch on CNN and through other uh, parts of the media. A major part of this strategy since 1961 has consisted of building slowly and installing a very dictatorial regional world government over all of Europe on top of the existing yeah. socialist bureaucracies that, that are in the governments of each of these countries, over all of Europe, and now sadly also Britain, mm. in the form of the European Union. And this constitutes an accomplishment of Leninist strategy, mm. as predicted by Galitsyn. Um, and of course, while the KGB had infiltrated all the European governments and the British government, as they had infiltrated the American CIA and, and other parts of the United States government, um, in addition to that, the current treaty arrangements between the European Union based in Brussels and, uh, this, and the new Russia mean that there's even further, tighter uh, Soviet and KGB control over the foreign policy of this new uh, globalist regional government that controls Russia, that controls Europe, and controls Britain. I don't disagree with any of that. Um, one of the uh, important things that Galitsyn teaches us in the Perestroika Deception is, is that uh, it doesn't matter who wins an election, the communists always win. Mm -hmm. Now the reason for that is that every single political activist you see on the Moscow stage, if you can be bothered to see what's going on, because by the way the TV cameras are only focused on Moscow, right. you never see what's going on in Leningrad or in Tbilisi or mm -hmm. in Alma Ata or anywhere else, right. only Moscow, right. that's where the control takes place, because all the other uh, so-called, you know, free republics now, they're not, they're controlled, of course, right. these republics, um, you know, they're still Stalinist states, right. almost entirely. There's hardly any, I don't think there are any exceptions to that. Mm -hmm. But um, th th this business of controlling all the political parties uh, and giving them, allowing them to adopt different names, you know, th this was a, a conscious policy mm -hmm. which was um, laid down by Gorbachev and Yeltsin mm -hmm. at the 28th Party Congress in. Uh, July 1990. Mm -hmm. Both Gorbachev and Yeltsin made speeches in which they said to the comrades, now is the time uh, to um, follow whatever path you feel would be most appropriate. In a nutshell, that's what they said. We have the two quotes in my book, mm -hmm. the, um, the European Union Collective. Uh, so that's what I call democratism, which is the creation and maintenance of the illusion of democracy. Mm -hmm. Now that pattern is being implemented in the European Union mm -hmm. because um, by various means almost all the participants even na at national level uh, in the political process are selected for the job or mm -hmm. are you know appointed or are you know, chosen now um, it's, it's quite difficult to explain this but it, in Britain there's an extremely uh, lethal piece of legislation which requires all political parties to register at a central registration uh, mm -hmm. point and the it, it, it basically dictates what the political parties can and cannot do mm -hmm. but in the European um, on the, at the European level no political party can participate in the European Parliament if it's not 100 percent signed up to the idea of the European project. And submission to the authority of Absolutely. this regional world government yeah. based in right. Brussels, yeah. which is now uh, imposing dictatorial controls on a daily basis mm. down to the most mm. minute level yeah. of business and human activity on all residents of yeah. Europe and increasingly in Britain. And if you read the Financial Times newspaper, mm. you see examples daily and in the Wall Street Journal mm. of how the European mm. Union is trying to tell people and businesses in the United States mm. what they will do. That's quite true. When Go Go Gorbachev visited London briefly for a day on the 23rd of March 2000 and um, during that visit he made a, a, a statement which I repeated at every opportunity. He, uh, he acknowledged and stated that the European Union is the new European Soviet and I quote, yes. that's what it is. Yes. Now, let me describe the European Union, what it really is. It is a political collective. Mm -hmm. 
So all these British uh, politicians who constantly talk about the need to be in the center of Europe and the need to influence, you know, for Britain's great experience to be used for the benefit of, of the Europeans so that they, you know, so that we can influence what they do, are completely wasting yes. their breath. They are insulting our intelligence. Mm -hmm. This is a political collective. Mm -hmm. in, a, in a political collective, decisions are taken uh, collectively. Right. No individual nation uh, can take any decisions. Okay. Now we so it destroys the sovereignty completely we have, of all the individual We have nations. no sovereignty. Right. We have no interests, and we have politicians in Westminster who talk about British interests. Mm -hmm. We have delegated and collectivized those interests. Mm -hmm. Now there are a few residual peculiar exceptions. For example, there's a thing called the Common Foreign and Security Policy, which is part of the Europe, of the collectivization yeah. uh, process. Well, Br Britain flouted that policy by mm -hmm. joining uh, the United States mm -hmm. in respect of this Iraqi operation. Right. But we shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. the, Ameri uh, the, the Europeans didn't know what to do and threw up their hands in horror. Yes. Um, but this will probably be the last chance we'll have mm -hmm. if we don't get out of it.